beginning. Okay, so yeah, my fortune cookie for those who were not live. Your boss is giving you a raise in the near future. Doubt that. But I'm going to be positive and I'm going to tell my boss that a fortune cookie said he has to give me a raise. And mine just basically says plan for many pleasures ahead. So that actually falls pretty good into our segment for today. What did Caitlin say? Yeah, what does yours say, Caitlin? What you have been wishing for is on its way. Which is great because I ordered food. <laughs> <laughs> that worked out pretty good. Okay, so our topic, setting goals. Yes. So there's a few ideas that I had swelling through my mind when we last entered our second podcast. And going into our third I just want to really express what a goal is, first of all. So a goal is, it can be short-term or long-term. And a goal is a period of time that something can be achieved successfully. And the key word there is successfully. Because if you have a goal in mind and you work to achieve it, and then you stop halfway through, a goal that is successful is more noticeable so then we have why set goals so setting a goal can have a sense of accomplishment they allow you to think more clearly on what you want to achieve in a short or long-term goal maybe you need to lose weight to become more healthy according to your doctor maybe you want to gain more muscle to become more confident but setting goals is the first step to a more fulfilling life now I got a question on mm -hmm. all this. What happens whenever you set goals that are just too far out there? Well, let me tell you this: no goal is too far out there. No, what? I, so, in one of my occupations, we do talk about setting goals mm -hmm. because it tends to be something that you got to do. Right. But uh, we were doing. A discussion on history like just open platform discussion and we we're talking about World War two and uh, the beach landings mm -hmm. um, one of the things that a lot of historians were talking about there is that some of their goals were you couldn't see the end in sight immediately right so they were saying well maybe they should have had short-term and long-term goals mm -hmm. using a hybrid approach instead of always being like hey i'm gonna reach for the stars but forgetting to land on the moon yeah so you have to definitely think about those small steps in order to make that giant leap right so just set yourself a small goal first so a small term short-term goal and to really think about that short-term goal we must first think how do i achieve it right and basically what a short-term goal is is setting an achievement you can accomplish in days or a few weeks so i have an example of that is basically losing one pound a week for four weeks that's a short-term goal now on the opposite of that a long-term goal is setting an achievement you can accomplish in months or a year so say you want to lose 40 pounds by the end of the year that's a long-term goal so with your analogy of the war, they probably had to first, their first short-term goal would be setting guys up on the ship, getting to the beach. Mm -hmm. Then from there, they can set another short-term goal to survive the beach landing. Then another short-term goal to get up onto the beach. And then their end goal would be to conquer that beach and make it safe for the allies. Now, what effect does achieving goals have on your brain? Well, being able to achieve a goal, um, it just gives you a sense of accomplishment and it gives you a dose of dopamine. So when you have a goal set and you do everything you can to put your mind to achieving that goal, it becomes addictive. And that addiction will drive you to 
achieve more goals and set new ones to even higher heights. Yeah, that's exactly what I was uh, getting at there is not only does it give you that feel good feeling that dopamine gives you, but it makes becoming successful addictive to you. Mm -hmm. So you're always trying to strive for the next and bigger achievement. So setting small goals gets you addicted to achieving goals Mm -hmm. every time you get them. And then you're like, hey, I really want that big goal now. And you keep on fighting and fighting until you get it. So guys like Elon Musk keep on making Mm -hmm. billions of dollars. Mm -hmm. Or Bezos. Like, going to be the world's first trillionaire. Yeah, for sure. And he just started out in, what, garage and worked his way up? Yeah, a bookstore in his garage. (laughs) So... The next form of goal setting is why we should set goals. And setting a goal can have a sense of accomplishment. They allow you to think more clearly. I already said this. I apologize. Uh, When to set goals would be the next. Uh, The sooner the better, obviously. Um, You want to start right away when you have an idea in your mind. So say you have an idea body and you have a dream that you want to accomplish. Well, Set a goal right away and work towards it slowly. Over time, you will accomplish your goal. And after one has been achieved, like we talked about, you set a new goal, you achieve it. And then you set a goal for even higher heights. And eventually... Biohack your body for success. Exactly. And eventually you get to the biggest dream that you can accomplish. And from there, you'll just want more. And from here, we talk about how to set a goal. So, like I said, dream big, right? It all starts with that dream, big or small. Start off with a short-term goal. Gain the knowledge to help yourself achieve that goal. And think of what you'll feel like, look like, and what your dreams are in the end. You eat that fortune cookie. (laughs) I just achieved a goal? (laughs) He wanted that cookie, and he got that cookie. Is this an ASMR challenge? (laughs) (laughs) I'm thinking we should probably get to our good news. That's probably a good point. So what do we got for good news, Travis? Um, let's start with painting. Move our way over to rhino poaching. Oh. Wait, how is that good news? And the pigs. Yes, the pigs. So let's go to our page view here. I just thought that this was cool because that's amazing. Of course. So just a 10-year-old. Donating all the money she made from her paintings. Like, that's just impressive. Probably should have read up on this. But, yeah. but yeah, totally cool. That's feel good. Some of her paintings are going for 10,000 euros. Pounds. Pounds, euros. Yeah, I think that, that, that is pounds. Okay. I had to think about it for a second. <laughs> Hey, but, and there's a Karen involved in a good way. But yeah, look at those paintings. Very artistic of such a young age. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like for a 10 year old, that's better than anything I can do. Like legit better than anything I can do. Yeah. Oh, and then cool. if you need a morning jolt. Let's go over here to the rhinos. So because people are locked down, they're no longer killing rhinos for their aphrodisiac effects of their horns. I don't know how true that is, though. But, yeah, it says there's a 23 decline since pretty much COVID started. And um, same with elephants, too. It looks like elephants have been less poached. I should really start reading these instead of just looking at the titles. But I think it's more interesting being off the cuff. Right. And then pigs. Oh, they may rival dogs as man's best friend. Pigs are cool anyways. Apparently celebrities. celebrities. (laughs) Okay, because celebrities are getting pigs. Everyone else is like, that's a good idea. But look at that pig. But look at the puppy. I know. But the pig and the puppy. both? Yeah. But would the puppy try to eat the pig? I don't think so. Uh, Ah. Okay. I might have been converted. (laughs) (laughs) Look at that cute little piglet. Oh, wow. So yeah, so just a few uh, feel-good stories of today. 
Okay, I think we already uh, kind of touched on this. Yeah. In me totally jumping the gun, but uh, <laughs> the difference between short term and long term. What is it? Hey, yeah, we already did talk about we that. We did, yeah. Totally. Oh, stepping on the scale. Yes. I'm personally against scales. I think they give us a bad idea of our overall health. Yeah. I mean, it depends on how you look at it, right? So someone could look on a scale and see, okay, on the perfect body weight. But others will obsess with that and be like, okay, well... I need to lose five pounds in one week or I won't be happy. And then I keep on stepping on scale every chance they get. And that obsession of stepping on a scale every day will kill your motivation. So you won't immediately see change. And then you focus on your diet or longer hours at the gym trying to slim down or bulk up. So cut it out. Like, honestly, just... Start with the obsession. If you're trying to change your weight, you want to do so in a healthy manner. And stepping on a scale every day is not going to change how fast you will lose or gain weight. So I have a couple strategies for people out there who like to step on a scale. But just keep in mind that every body is different and you're not going to see change right away. So my strategy would be to ask yourself, how do I properly weigh myself? And my suggestion would be stepping on a scale with no clothes on once a week at the same time, preferably in the morning before breakfast. If you Now, want, why would you oh, do that? Because in the morning before breakfast, you have no food, no water. You are at your purest form of your true weight. And, and if you want to determine how much you gain throughout the day, which you will gain throughout the day, think about 12, 14, maybe even 16 hours after your initial weight, stepping on a scale, and that will tell you, you'll probably gain 5, 6, maybe even 7 pounds throughout the day. And that is normal. Okay, okay. so just make sure that you know that that's normal. And when you step on a scale once a week, make sure it's the exact same time so you get the exact same measurements every time and change will come eventually. Now, a lot of people, uh, anyways, whenever I was in high school, would talk about BMI. What is BMI? BMI is body mass index. So the reason why I am talking about this is because the way that you measure this is very inaccurate and some would say even irresponsible. Okay. Um, the BMI was in, introduced in the early 19th century by a Belgian named Lambert Adolphe Jacques Quet I'm going to butcher that. Quetelet? He was a mathematician, not a physician. And he produced the formula to have a quick and easy way to measure the degree of obesity in the population to assist the government in allocating resources. In other words, it's a 200 year old hack. But here's the thing about that mm -hmm. I'm obese according to it. Yeah, so am I. And the way that this BMI determines your weight is you take your height and you divide it by your. Um, weight so the example that I have here is honestly myself a 6 foot 200 pound male and then you just take your weight in kilograms so mine is 90 kilograms divided by my height which is 6 feet in meters is 1.82 meters squared so that gives you a BMI index of 28.8 to 29 percent body fat and if you look where my bmi category is i am technically overweight but there are other ways to do this so a lot of trainers and a lot of physicians do not like to use this because it is so inaccurate yeah my uh, bmi 
this is back in January, was 28.3, which still put me in the obese zone. Mm -hmm. But whenever you look at my percent body fat, I'm sitting at 16.8, which has me just below average. Yeah, and I have here a different calculator that you can find on any online calculator. So basically, it goes off of measurements in inches. So you take your gender, your age, your weight, height, then you measure in inches your neck, your waist, and your hip, and it will give you a more accurate calculation. So according to the BMI, I'm overweight, but according to this calculation here, my body fat is 25.3, which puts me in the average category. And my body fat mass is 50.5 pounds. And my muscle, or lean muscle, is 149.5. So a scale doesn't tell you that. So Travis, what do you see when you step on a scale? I don't. (laughs) Normally whenever I step on a scale, I'm like, ah, I didn't gain enough weight. Mm -hmm. But I'm not taking into account the amount of muscle that I've gained. Mm Mm-hmm. And I'm never doing it at the same time. And that's why you don't have one. <laughs> no, weight is just, it's a subconscious. Well, it's not a subconscious. It's a, it's a conscious thing that people lean towards to see their health. And that's just not true. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people will step on a scale and say, oh, I'm overweight. But you don't realize how much muscle you're putting on or even if you're 120 pounds soaking wet, you can see that you're underweight. But as long as you feel good and have confidence in yourself, I think that's more important than anything that a scale can tell you. That makes a lot of sense. I just pulled up here. These are the guys that my dietician was using in order to actually do our body scans. So it basically uses electricity as well as all the other metrics. Mm -hmm. And then it gives you a nice report that breaks it down a little better and honestly the average person will probably gain self-confidence from something like this over an actual scale yeah we just breeze through our notes because i just really wanted to stress it and it was really important to me that i talk about this to get it out there that stepping on a scale is not do or die is not important and from there you can set yourself goals that can be achieved and from that you'll get that feel good and you want to keep going and eventually it doesn't matter what a scale says i like to use a mirror test if i look good in the mirror i'm feeling good but i always look good (laughs) (laughs) no usually whenever i'm trying to figure that kind of stuff out it's more or less did i lift more Mm -hmm. do i have more energy throughout the day Mm -hmm. Have I run further? And I hate running. Yes. Everybody knows it. <laughs> Cardio, I absolutely despise doing, but in the end, it does help the heart. Yeah. And you got to keep that heart going. Exactly. That's what, that's what's important. Just keep this clear and then keep that unclogged and you'll be set for days, weeks, months, years, and eventually a lifetime. So what kind of goals do you have? Right now, I am looking to lose belly fat, and then I will pack on 30 pounds of muscle to look like the personal trainer that I want to become. Hmm. Right? What are your goals? To get back going to the gym every day. Oh, okay. Short-term goals versus long-term goals. I see. There you go. My long-term goal is to lose weight, then gain weight. Yours is just to get back into the gym and get to, get back to feeling good every day. Exactly. So I thank you for this. Um, that's been really insightful for me as well. We don't have anything else left in our notes, do we? No, but that's okay because this one was just a short, quick, to the point. Um, if anyone out there has any goals that they want to write to us about we can hear them out and uh, maybe work towards setting new goals and uh, yeah let's get working out together (laughs) okay
ham sandwich walks into a bar and orders a beer. Bartender says, sorry, we don't serve food here. <laughs> uh, dad joke. Oh, wow. Uh, I'm going to hit stop now. <laughs> okay. <laughs>